Dun, dun, dun. All right. We are <laughs> we are recording. Welcome to the Difference Makers, guys. This is uh sorry, this is the Difference Makers. My name is Justin Tamani, and I'm here today with Tola Morak Inyo. Did I say it yeah. right? Yeah. Morak Inyo. It's like you're a little confused, but <laughs> yeah. I know Morak because Inyo. I Morak Inyo. Okay, there we go. Morak yeah, there Inyo. you go. Okay. I was confused because Everybody says Moraquino. So when you hear yeah. broadcasts and things, Moraquino. But it's yep. say it one more time. Moraquino. Moraquino. Yeah. So people, you know, all the broadcasters have screwed me up for all the years. It's a tough, it's a tough last name, and it's it's really close. And so it's one of those things you kind of just gotta let slide, like, yeah. Ah, what you gonna do? <laughs> Honestly. My, so my last name, Tamani, like I get Tamane. Some people add letters in. There's Tamari. Like it's like, you know, it sounds like a sauce at that I'm sorry, point. Say it. Tamani? It's like Tamane is more like the, the phonetical pronunciation. So it's mm. Japanese. But right, people okay. say Tamane or um, like people add letters in and like there's like an R I in there. Japanese right. sometimes too. Yeah. With my last name. I'm like, hmm, no, but cool. But yeah, no. <laughs> I think it's the the K I N Y the the last part right. is is it's kind of like Japanese sounding. Yeah. So so what is your your background then? I'm uh, I'm half Nigerian and half Caucasian. Okay. <laughs> half okay. Half. Right on. And then so we were talking. So Tola is a let's let's backtrack. Tola three times right. CrossFit Games athlete. Um, growing up wrestler football player gymnast you did some pole vaulting so we were talking just before we started recording you're you're all over the place with the athletic skills that you've developed over the years yeah i like to think so i like to uh <laughs> think i can do most things or figure most things out pretty quickly yeah and i think that that goes a long way with, within sport and um especially like being on the teams that you've been on, like the team athletes have to do so many different things than the individual athletes. Yeah. I think, uh, the, the team side offers a little bit more in the kind of balance between like fitness and athleticism, the way you were, you were saying, like, um, you have to be really, really fit all the time to be an individual. Yeah. But you don't necessarily have to be super athletic all the time. Yeah. And I feel like on the team side, it gives you're more valuable if you're more athletic, you know, you have to do, you have to move fast. Yeah. Um, you have to, you know, do weird stuff like the worm. You have to maybe like hold positions for longer. Like if you're waiting for like synchro or something like that, it's just, it, it offers benefits to creative movement. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you there. And, you know, you'll, you see different types of athletes excel, but uh, sorry, on the team side versus the individual mm -hmm. side. But you're right. Like the athleticism, I never really considered how much more athleticism the team side needs than just the individual side. Not, not to say the individuals don't, but you can get through a lot more with pure just fitness. Right. I think uh, a big one was maybe – what year maybe 2017 when they first had the it was my first year at the games and they had the obstacle course yeah and watching that you're like <laughs> okay some people are athletes some people are really fit some people yeah. are both yeah um but like on the team side i i feel like a lot of people that year on the team side were like collegiate athletes or or, or uh just really really diverse physical kind of people and like watching the teams go through the or o course was like a lot of fun yeah it, it was definitely a different flow than the individuals but i mean the individuals were also in a different like it was right. more just like a straight up sprint bracketed. so it was like kind of yeah. less to watch right yeah right on um so you let's let's kind of backtrack even more you are in iceland right now correct I'm in Iceland. <laughs> so you're in Iceland right now. You're from Maryland. 
I'm from Maryland. Yeah. I know. How did we end up here? Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, we've seen some of the teams that have formed this year that, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have decided you picked up and moved. seems like you picked your whole life up and moved it to Iceland to compete this season. (laughs) It's, it's funny. Like small things bother me, but like big decisions I make for some reason really easily and really fast. (laughs) Um, I kind of like, brainstormed it felt like it was like a long time but it ended up being like two minutes of like can i do this like logistically will it work where am i gonna put my stuff uh, i think i can do this all right let's do it <laughs> that, then that was it and it was like that was it yeah. so then you're you're in iceland to, to train and compete alongside yep. annie thor's daughter con yeah. porter and lauren fisher correct that's correct but then on a daily basis, who who else is training in that training environment? Is is Kat right. in there? So we, is, we have the four there? the four on our team. Uh, Kat's in every day with us, and BK yeah. is in. I would say seventy five percent of the time. Uh, with the weather right now, it actually just calmed down. It's nice and sunny, but about twenty minutes ago, it's like windy and snowy. Okay. Uh, they shut the roads down between where BK lives and Reykjavik. Okay. Um, because the wind is so bad that it'll like actually blow cars, like blow them off, <laughs> blow them so, out of here. So it's just like, no, like we're going to, yeah, they the close the roads. Down. Yep. Is that frequent? Um, it's been frequent this year. I think the weather is a little worse this year than typically it is around this time. I mean, we're, we're, what, we're pretty deep in March at this point. Um, uh, there's been a lot of snow and, and the wind is crazy. Um, I understand why, like you can feel it even when you're just like driving and it's, they, the roads are open, but like, you'll just be driving and you'll feel like, Oh, <laughs> just like from that significant. Oh yeah. It's very significant. Okay. And the okay, cars so... here are also really small though. So, you know, maybe that plays into it. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. That's a factor too. So what are some of the other like Icelandic differences that you've noticed? Like, I mean, small cars, like you're coming from Vegas, you're coming from Boston, like, right. You, like Vegas, um, obviously warm most of the year. Well, if you've never been to Iceland, all, all of their like heating and energy comes from geothermal. And so when you take a shower, it smells a little bit like it doesn't actually smell like it's hard to explain. Like you're not going to smell from taking a shower, yeah. but the water has like a, a sulfur smell to it. So like, it's a little like. When you run the hot water, it smells a little bit like eggs. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. It's like you say that, like no one here would probably really notice because it's the water they've had forever. Yeah. But like coming from the U.S., um, it's something I I notice, and it's like takes some getting used to. You're like, is there something wrong with the water? But yeah, it's like a like a sulf- sulfuric sulfuric yeah. smell. Also, just like turning on the water in the morning like to get like cold water for like just drinking yeah. uh it's hot at first so it, it's hot and then it goes to cold okay that that's weird that's it's just it's just different <laughs> that's, i mean it's just different than what what we would commonly be used to right like right. usually it's the other way around we flip it on and it right. obviously goes from yeah. the cold to hot right they have to cool, cool their water down i guess because it's just like how it's stored or how it's heated underground i'm not the one to ask but it's pretty cool i think (laughs) yeah yeah that's cool Uh, there's never a shortage of hot water which is definitely nice yeah that's key especially um i mean especially taking a shower after a long session like you just oh (laughs) some days you just need that (laughs) for sure so what what has um like even the, the nutrition been like there is, is the diet different? Like I know that. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good question. It's tough. Um, I miss Trader Joe's. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've been to Trader Joe's. Yeah. Uh, but honestly it's, it's, it hasn't been too bad. I had to learn, well, how to, how to make rice, which was a big one. I know it's usually just like, you can buy the, uh, the packs and just toss in the microwave. Yeah. Um, but learned how to make rice and then everything else got an air fryer and we're pretty much, pretty much good to go after that. Um, okay. And eating a lot of lamb. They do lots of lamb here. 
Isn't lamb like uh, super cheap or something? Uh, I don't know if it's super cheap, but it's super common and it's very good. Yeah. Okay. Maybe like a, a very common like Icelandic soup. It's like lamb, lamb and vegetable soup and it's unreal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah, so I the food the, the food's been pretty good. Um a little short on like the vegetable selection. Yeah. But besides that, it's fine. Okay. I saw Khan just post a story not long ago saying he missed breakfast mm-hmm. food. Yeah. I I feel like they just uh there's not as many like a kind of like diner style breakfast spots that are like okay. pretty common in the US and, and Australia. Um yeah. They're, they don't have as many of those. Um, they have nice, like, coffee and, like, really, really good bakeries. Yeah. I say coffee. I don't really drink coffee, but uh, apparently it's good. <laughs> yes. Coffee. Yeah, what time is it there? Like, uh, We're nine? at eight, 8.30 almost. Okay, early. It's early. It's all right. It, I've been up for It's 3.30 here. <laughs> yeah. So today's Thursday. Uh, we're the week before the quarterfinals. Was there a training session today? What was, what was today like for you? Um, this is kind of a deload week for the team. Uh, yeah. I think Kat and BK are kind of in a, I wouldn't call it a deload, but more like a, a prep week because they're next week. Uh, they start next week, right? Yeah. And then right. I think the, the team teams are the quarter- week after. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I was thinking that you had to go next week as well the quarters but yeah the team qualifiers the following week right and so but, yeah, go ahead from a technical standpoint could you do both like if you really wanted to i i think so i think uh quite a few people did it last year and then they put the team workouts out and they were almost exactly the same or like variations of the individual yeah. ones and everyone was upset because they had to do a lot of ghds so oh yeah there's like maybe not the best idea no yeah, because um, I think somebody did did the team qualifier, did the quarterfinals, and then decided to go individual once they did the semifinals. Huh. It's like they they kind of did everything. It seems like a lot. It does. <laughs> it does. Um, yeah. So Khan is in London right now. Lauren is in San Diego. Okay. And Annie is in Spain. Oh. <laughs> They just left. Everyone me. left. I know, just everyone left, left me. Uh, I was going to go back to Boston for, for a few days, but uh, the flights were kind of crazy expensive. Usually they're not bad. Like it's a, it's a really easy flight. It's like four hours. Yeah. It's like easier to fly back to Boston than to fly from Boston to Cali or something like that. But um, the flights were a little expensive this weekend. And uh, I thought about going to London. Yeah. But I feel like... I like I like being in a schedule, especially like getting ready for you know the next stage, and I feel like I don't really need that much of a break right now, and uh, I'd like to take it when I want it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. Um, so even talking about preparing for the next stage and all that, has this training environment, this training experience that you've had, uh, been different? I mean, obviously you're in a different place, but. How is it differed from training for the games with you know the teams in Boston and you know, I guess most of you went with teams in Boston. Yeah, uh, three three kind of Boston based teams, northeastern teams. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's the environment here is spectacular. First yeah. of all, um, just the facility across the Reykjavik is. If you haven't seen a photo of it, it's amazing. It's a huge facility. They have like two like classroom sections and they run class like all day. Um, yeah. They have like 1500 members. It's insane. Um, and then they have like a, yeah, they have like a back area and a like stretching mobility room, which is the best. Um, and like I've coached a few classes here as well. And it's just like, it's a really cool community. Um, CrossFit is on a different level of like cool here for lack of a better term than I've experienced in the U S okay. and so everyone who comes into train is like, like they know what the workout's going to be. They'll have like before class starts, they'll have like their bars out, their weights set up. They know every, they know what's going on. 
like barely have to explain things to them and they're like really really attentive to uh feedback and and coaching and they're just i mean it's really a pleasure to, to work with them um and i get why they have such a big community so I mean, that's a coach's dream right there. Yeah. I mean, I coached full time for five years. So like looking at it from that standpoint, I'm like, wow, I would love to coach here if like that were my thing yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I do you think it's the impact of Annie and Katrin and, and all the the Icelandic uh, daughters that that have come yeah, out of there? I mean, I mean, f- absolutely. Like th- th- they're. They were some some like the pioneers of the sport. They went to the top level and then they brought it back to a country that's like, it's such a small, it's 300,000 people. It's like yeah. very small. And so to have some, you know, some of the top athletes in the world just coming back and bringing that success back down, I mean, uh, like I said, CrossFit's cool here and it's it's a cool switch i guess um i cons noticed it too is like <laughs> kind of like when someone asks you what you do you're kind of like ah oh, like you know like in the fitness industry or, or whatever you're gonna say yeah. and you're like oh i do crossfit and people are like oh awesome like do you know yeah. and everyone knows everyone else so ev- yeah. everyone knows annie everyone knows cat and bk and, and those guys and uh yeah the the environment's amazing i mean y- yami is a fantastic coach and it's I'm excited to uh, continue to see the progress our, our team is going to make this year. Uh, that I mean that it's it's an exciting year, and I think that that team, like the team competition, has notoriously been like not super deep in the past. Right. We're the top outliers, and then, but I think like with these kinds of teams forming, it it's starting to make it a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to hopefully tune into and watch. What's up guys, Justin here. I'm really sorry to interrupt the show, but we're here to talk about something special. This is to talk about Bionic. Bionic is the first of its kind AI based motion tracking mobility test that's designed to show you what your body is really doing. We've designed seven unique tests that show you your range of motion for different joints throughout your entire body and how they work together. Once you're done the test, you'll be given a body map score, which breaks down your entire body and their different range of motion. From there, the Wadproof app will also design a mobility program specifically tailored to your needs and the things you want to improve. I can't wait for you guys to try out the test. Go download the Wadproof app today, start your free seven day trial and try Bionic today. All right guys, back to the show. Yeah, so I think there's a few levels to that. One is that in the past, let's talk like maybe like five, six years ago, the, we were just not as far along as a sport, you know? Yeah. Um, at this point, if you're an individual trying to make it to the games, it, it has to be your full-time job, training, recovering, eating, working with sponsors. That's like, that's what you do. Yeah. And everyone who's at the top is kind of doing that. And the field is so deep. Like when you when you look at semifinals, uh, we'll take the one I went to, for example, West Coast Classic last year. Uh, not a single rookie qualified for the games. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And out of that, you have on the men's and women's side, probably three or four individuals who have gone to the games before that didn't qualify. Yeah. So the field is so deep now that if you're not the best of the best, you're not going to make the games. It chance or or, or it, it is at least questionable. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to push more athletes into the team side, which is a great thing because it's going to make the team division more competitive, more fun to watch. And you'll have, you know, athletes that, may have made it in the past or are just really good athletes, but n- maybe offer something different or can't quite crack that individual barrier going team. 
Yeah. I think it's also going to work the other way where you have newer athletes looking to get to the next, you know, the next level starting out. This is, was kind of my plan with my original, original team and coaches when I was, when I first moved to Boston was, you know, we'll start out with team. That's a great way to one train at a really high level with really good athletes, Mm -hmm. get some exposure to, you know, competing, uh, competing at regionals, competing at the games, being at the highest level, and then kind of go from there to see if individuals in the cards. And do you feel like that was a good, I mean, it must've been a good path. Like you're still, you're still in the game. You're still competing. You're still, you're going, but do you feel like that was um, a good path for you? Or did you feel like at the time, you wanted to be an individual, but you felt like you needed to take a step back or like, where were you? No, at um, I, I, it's going to be different for everyone, but for me, it was absolutely the right decision. Um, I wasn't ready to compete at that state. I wasn't ready in like, I didn't have my life set up enough. If that makes sense. Like yeah. I still had to work full time to be able to support myself in Boston. And so I, I don't think, don't think I could have handled it, uh, all the different aspects that go into trying to train as an individual. Um, I think, you know, you have some people who are going to be able to go right from wherever they start to the individual level. I think Mal O'Brien's a great example. Yeah. Like she's absolutely killing it right now. She's yeah. 18 and just a, a complete savage. But for, for a lot of people, I think the progressive kind of stepping stones make more sense. Um, oh, yeah. Because, like, imagine you're, you're someone who's averse to going team, but you can't quite make the games. Let's say you're, like, five, six years deep. You've never made it to the games. You're now, you've now given up the opportunity to go to the games five, six times on a team learn, grow, get exposure to new people, new opportunities, and then kind of go from there. And I think, you know, for me, competing on a team has opened so many doors for me that it was, it was definitely the right decision. And I also really enjoy being on a team. Like I would prefer to compete on a team than compete individually. Yeah. So, I mean, when you, if I'm not mistaken, you actually earned a ticket to the 2020 CrossFit games through the Dubai CrossFit championship in 2019. Did. So were you like, obviously with all the changes and everything that got rescinded and like taken back. But, um, what was that like going through that whole process? Cause you qualified in Dubai, which is in December for the CrossFit games. That's in July of the following year, technically. Right. What was the process of going through that year? Like, did yeah, you that was go a into- tough one. Um, I, I did. I was, it was, it's kind of like, it's definitely on my list of things that I want to do. And it's still yeah. there. Like yeah. I want to compete individually at the CrossFit games. I qualified in 2020 out of Dubai, just the way the season was set up that year. Um, I earned a spot and then COVID started rolling out right around that March time frame. And realistically, as it, you know, stuff started shutting down, businesses started to close. I was like, hmm, there's a high percent chance that the games one doesn't happen or that they cut the field. And most likely that means I'm not going to be able to compete. Yeah. So I kind of had the foresight that this wasn't going to be the year, uh, unfortunately. And it ended up not being... And although I would have loved to compete at the games, I think that, you know, being part of the, like the online games competition wouldn't really have filled that, uh, filled that space I was looking for kind of that achievement anyways. Yeah. You would have got and, a couple of pairs of shorts and some shirts, but it's not. The yeah. Same. It's not the same. And so you know, the next year I decided to move to Vegas and give it another shot. And it just ended up being that I, I wasn't as prepared as I should have been last year. I was, uh, 
I was dealing with some like knee issues and I basically, you know, cross countryed and then the week I got to Vegas, the open started and it was just kind of like, uh, I felt like I was playing catch up the whole year. Yeah. Um, and I did okay. I just, uh, was, wasn't at my best, I feel like. And I was planning on giving it, you know, a, another rip this year, but I felt like this opportunity, uh, I mean, like I said, team is kind of where my heart lies. I think it's yeah. more fun and I feel more accomplished, um, com- you know, chasing goals with, I don't know, with, with people around me, you know, where we're chasing the same goals and just like the highs are so much better in my opinion, when you can share it with, uh, like-minded friends. Yeah. So what was that, that like text message like, or, or did it come out of nowhere where Annie's just like, Hey, so do you want to move to Iceland and be on a team with me? Like, what, how does that, yeah, how does that all go actually down? Actually exactly <laughs> how it happened. And it was out of the blue and it was random. I got a Instagram DM Okay. Uh, from Annie <laughs> and it was I think word for word hey do you want to move to Iceland and go team question mark <laughs> and in my mind so like this is where that process happened in my mind I read it and I'm like this got to be a, a joke I was about to say a bad word <laughs> <laughs> it's like this has got to be a joke and I read it I'm like Annie doesn't seem like the kind of girl who would joke Maybe she was drunk. And then I was like, mm, I don't think Annie drinks. I was like, yeah. hmm, could I do this? My lease is up in two months. There's plenty of storage units in Vegas. I do like Iceland. I've been here twice. Uh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, give me a call. Uh, talk to me. And uh, we had like two calls and that was that. And that, that was, his... so did you know, I mean, did you go into any depth with like, okay, who else is going to be on the team or were yeah, you the one who of kind course. of brought Khan in? Um, I did not bring Khan in, but he was uh, someone that I had suggested. Um, so I, I call or we were on the phone. I was like, okay, first, like, what's the plan for the team? Who's, who, who do you have in mind? Yeah. She's like, okay, we're kind of mulling through some guys. And she was super honest with me. It was like, I hope no one gets weird about this. <laughs> it was like me, uh, Noah, uh, Willie. And and it was just people she wanted to reach out to to see if they were interested. And, yeah. and Henrik. And she was already locked in on Lauren. And I've competed against Lauren quite a few times. Um, uh, we were both on multiple Invictus teams. Um, yeah. And so I've kind of been around her a bit and I know how good she is. I was a little concerned that she was just coming out of surgery, but Annie, I, I, in my mind, I was like, okay, this is, you know, Annie's decision. If she's confident in it, we're good to go. Um, and I just like think you kind of got to start with a base of trust and go from there. And we've had a great time so far. Um, and then for the guys, um, I, I think some of those guys were just not ready to make the jump from individual to team. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, of course makes total sense. They're all very good. Um, and it was kind of finding a guy who was ready to make that jump and who also could logistically make it work. So I had suggested uh, Con was one. Alex Smith with, with another one. Um, and I think those were my like top two guys. I've also, you know, I've competed with both of them before. And yeah. so I knew I would feel comfortable with either one of those guys. Um, and it ended up being, being con and we live together and, you know, it's been great. Awesome. Yeah. And then now what's that environment like, like when you're training there, like, does it feel like Annie's the captain of the team? Like, it, is it, in that way or because maybe you have a lot more team experience you're able to share that a little bit more like how does that dynamic work there yeah um i would say annie does a great job of letting yami and frederick do their job which is coach yeah. um 
they are the coaches and we are the athletes and that's the dynamic. And we all understand that. And we're, I feel like we're all professionals about that. Um, as far as like actual team stuff goes, mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a great kind of round table discussion on, you know, I'll be like, oh, I think we should try this because of these reasons. Someone will say, well, I think we should try this because I think it's faster this way. We'll test both. We'll see what works, figure out, you know, what makes us more tired, what was ended up being faster and what's going to work for us. And then we go with that one and we, we just bang. Yeah. Cause you guys are all, you guys are all veterans of the sport. I like to think so. A few yeah. years deep now. You guys are all veterans and you guys have the experience and not just like, like, you know, you're saying like somebody going team to start their career and then possibly branching an individual after but like all of you guys have been to the games individual team or like in some way or another mm -hmm. for multiple years now you've all coached at affiliates you've all right. done this for a long time so i feel like you all have a good sense of movement in yourselves and and that teamwork um so i feel like that would almost make it easier where somebody like doesn't come out of the blue with some ridiculous idea because they have never yeah. tried it before. Right. I think that having us all kind of have, like we all have a, a little bit different depth of experience on certain things. Like yeah. my weightlifting, I have a large weightlifting depth. Yeah. Annie's been a past champion and her CrossFit is just insane. Like yeah. Con is a fantastic swimmer. His engine's incredible. Lauren also has a great weightlifting depth. And so in each particular uh, piece of the day or exercise or lift, someone's offering something different mm -hmm. uh, or some, maybe something someone's not heard before. And I think everyone's very receptive. Like that's how good athletes become great. They, they get into a community and they learn and grow from each other. And I think this is a great example of that. Um, and especially when you have coaches that are eyes on, hands on all the time to help filter out the ideas that maybe aren't so good or point you in the right direction or just keep you motivated is, I think it's a recipe for uh, success. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys, I, I like, like I said, I'm super excited to watch this season. All the the steps, you know. I think there's a lot of of uh, there's a lot building in this season that makes it feel exciting. And I I don't know if you feel that or if it's just the hype of the open, but it's like this this year feels like we're on a, a more steady path for some reason. Yeah, I think I think a big part of it's like well, I was gonna say the world's in a better place, but you know it's not quite true. Uh, COVID is seems to be <laughs> yeah winding down. Hopefully uh, the rest of the world wants to chill out a little bit too. But uh, as far as CrossFit goes, um, I feel like, you know, that we're kind of back to, we kind of know what's coming. Like a few years ago, we had open regionals games. That's just the way it was. And now we're kind of into a similar flow, a, a little different, but the, the flow is familiar. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's exciting. You know, we know what to expect a little bit as far as how to qualify and the, and the process. And I think as an athlete, like having unknowns is one of the hardest thing. And yeah. when you know the qualification process, you know, when you, you know, when you have to decide whether you're going team or individual, when you have to decide these things, having that information is super helpful. And um, I'm super excited for the season. I think the team competition is going to be fun to watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really, I'm not like, I'm not a trash talker or anything like that. Um, you know, I've competed against Rich and Mayhem for all of my years that I've competed on a team yeah. and they've, I have seen them lose. Yeah. Okay. It's possible. It is possible. Um, and I think, you know, if there's 
teams that uh, teams that can challenge them, you're going to see them kind of start to rise starting this year. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Now, speaking of the games, last year you were on the uh, demo team. Mm -hmm. With Mr. Porter himself. Yeah. So it was, what was that experience like? Because that's got to be a whole different – that was your first year doing that, right? It was my first year doing that. Um, yeah. First of all, the volume was crazy. Uh, like we did all of the individual workouts, maybe besides one or two, uh, all of the team workouts, some of the master's workouts. Um, and uh, for a lot of them, it was like some of them were still being built out. Some of them were built out, but hadn't been tested on the floor. Some of them needed to be tested in the back and on the floor. Like, I think the, uh, the, the 21, was it 2159 or 27, 2159, like snatch and assault bike. Oh yeah. 2159 snatch assault bike. Yep. Or we did bike. that in some capacity, like over the course of the days we were there, like I did it three times. I think Con and James did it four like either the individual version or the team version or something like that. Yeah. And it's just like, there are times when we'd go into the Coliseum, they'd be like, okay, here's the workout. We're starting in five minutes. And we'd be like, oh, okay. Uh, I remember like for the, uh, it was team workout. It was like squats and burpees and pegboard. Yeah. Um, we got in there and they're like, they were, they, we're screwing in the pegboard like as they were telling us the workout and we're like, wow, we're just going to have to jump right into this at like eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. And we'd uh, hit the workout and then go to a briefing. <laughs> yeah. You guys are the uh, hardest working people fun. there. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I had so many steps. Oh, so many steps. Yeah. Cause I guess you're like in the Coliseum, then you're in the athlete area, then you're in right. the, the, the uh, field then you're, you know, you're all over then the you're place. You're going to the vendors and like this yeah. and that. And uh, it was so much fun though. And it was really cool to get a behind the scenes look at the process of how the workouts are built and how they flow together and, and just kind of the trajectory of, uh, of the weekend and of the story of the games and, it was uh, definitely gives you a different kind of appreciation for um, how it all comes together. Yeah, that yeah, that's true. I mean, I was there in in like a, a spectator capacity, so we would see you guys kind of come into the picture, disappear like all the <laughs> yeah. time. But I can't imagine doing all of those workouts that many times because like you're looking at different look like you're probably testing that 21 15, 9 with like different loading different reps like 27 21 or 21 you know cal is on the bike but like 27 cals or sorry snatches or like different yeah. combos like that right like where and even just small things like okay where if it's a team workout where are the other athletes going to stand are they going to have two bikes or four bikes are they going to load the barbells on the floor or is someone else going to load them like all these tiny little details that you wouldn't even think of um, just kind of getting mapped out on the fly and then put into action. It's uh, it's really quite the process. Yeah. And then also seeing, you know, testing something new, like the freestanding handstand pushup workout Okay. Uh, was like, I tested it. Like everyone was like, oh, I had such an aggressive time cap. It was like seven minutes, I think. I thought it was um, 12, but maybe I'm wrong, but it, Whatever it, it was, it, like but not whatever many people it was, finished it. Right. It's like I did it in like five minutes. James did it in like five minutes. Kristen did it. Uh, uh, Christine Cole did it in like five minutes. Yeah. And so they're like, all right, seven minutes sounds good. Everyone should be fine. <laughs> and then watching it actually play out, you're like, oh, this workout's really hard. And it just shows you the depth of, like I was saying earlier, people who don't necessarily make it to the games – but are still at a very high level. Like uh, Christine just missed out. James is obviously a, a veteran of a long time. And to, to have those athletes performing a new movement, a new workout and putting up what would have been top times yeah. shows you how deep the field really is. Yeah. 
that I've that's very true. And like I didn't really take that into consideration, but yeah, I mean, you actually snatched more than Guy did as the demo guy. Yeah, he didn't get to go up as heavy as he could have, though. True. I like to think that I would have outsnatched Guy. I think it would have been fun to watch. I do, however, think he would out clean and jerk me. Uh, you hate to see it, but okay. <laughs> can't be can't be on top all the time. But like, it would have been interesting to see. But then again, at the end of the day, it's like this is you know he already won. He doesn't need to go win by more. Right. But it that would have been fun to see. Yeah, I feel similarly though. Like in a lifting event, if I know what everyone's hit, I'm hitting one pound more and we're calling it there. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I mean I mean, I just pulled up your stats on the, the games website and just just for anybody who doesn't know you, you have a listed clean and jerk of three ninety, a listed snatch of three forty, back squat five hundred, and a deadlift six fifteen on the games website those are those are yeah those are all pretty accurate there for right now. Uh, <laughs> so, maybe my back squat's a little lighter i haven't hit that in a long time yeah but you know we're we're not talking you're talking about somebody who likes to lift some weights and throw them around and <laughs> yeah it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um now for uh this season and like making that move out to iceland What's like the the mental prep in or the the support system been like? Is it different than what you were used to at home, or like are you working into new routines to be comfortable because it is a different environment, or are you feeling comfortable? Yeah, I think I'm pretty good at knowing what works. Excuse me, what uh, works for me. Like I, as a person, like I need alone time. So like that's one thing where like on a team. Sometimes you can spend too much time together. And like, that's something I feel like you just got to communicate. Like everyone wants to be there for each other, but like, I need to be alone for like, you're not going to hear from me. I can't be bothered. Be like, oh, are you alive? I'd be like, yep, thumbs up. And then like, that's it for like two or three days sometimes. And it's like, that's fine. But yeah. everything else, like getting the food dialed in, the nutrition, um, I like having things in order. I feel like I feel much better uh, throughout the week if I know everything's prepared. So so if I know, oh, I need to go shopping this day because I'm running out of meat or like whatever it is, um, I want to be prepared for those things so that I can be fully attentive to you know the task at hand, which right now is getting ready for uh, quarterfinals. Right on. Awesome. Well, on that note, I'm not going to keep you too much longer because now you get your alone time. Now everybody's out of town. <laughs> Everyone's out of town. It's a rest day. Perfect. Great. Go enjoy yourself in some of the Icelandic hot springs if you. Yeah, if you're ever here, this place is like 10 minutes outside the city called Sky Lagoon. It's new. Okay. I'm really sorry to shit on this, but it's better than Blue Lagoon, guys. Okay. It's very nice. You should definitely go. All right. Noted. Anybody going to Iceland? Sky Lagoon. That's the spot. All right. So we got the quarterfinals coming up next. And then actually, where would you compete in the semifinals then? That's a great question. I don't know if we have the option. Ideally, we'd like to go to Lowlands because it's the first week and London is the last week. So that's that's what we have our eyes set on. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Tola, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. If people want to find you on Instagram, I believe. I Look at that right the there. Here. Yeah, beautiful. Tola Quino 54 on Instagram. There you go. And then, no, uh, not Quino. Say it again. Not Quino. What did I say? So what is you it? Said Tola, you said Tola Quino. That would be more Quino. But it's Akin. Akin, yo. Okay, so so it's not Tola. It's Tol Akin, yo. It would be, yeah, Tol Akin, yo. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, yeah, I messed it up. I apologize. 
I, see like it's hard program. to correct people on because it's like Nyeh. yeah i messed but, it up sorry right. we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it i appreciate your time thank you so much good luck with quarterfinals next week and uh i <laughs> think we'll you. hopefully we'll we'll try to catch up before uh semifinals or the games there and yeah sounds good thanks for having me awesome thanks so much